subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of March. Border face-off impedes ties. India tells Chinese Foreign Minister. National Assembly session on no trust motion against Pakistan. PM adjourn till March 28. And. Maldives former president plots come back with India out campaign. And now for all the details. India's foreign minister S.J. Shankar after meeting his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in New Delhi on Friday said that frictions and tensions on their border cannot be reconciled with normal relations. He said India sees the complete disengagement of Chinese and Indian troops from a face off as key to better ties. Wang Yi's visit was the first by a top Chinese official since border clashes in Ladakh region in 2020. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi on Friday held talks with his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar in New Delhi. A day after he arrived on a surprise India trip, the first by a top Chinese official since border clashes in 2020. Jay Shankar during the meeting told Wang Yi that ties between the two countries cannot be normal as long as there is a huge deployment of troops along their border in Ladakh region where at least 20 Indian and four Chinese soldiers were killed in clashes in June 2020 Wang Yi said China respects India's traditional role in the region and both countries should put their differences on the border issue in its proper place in relations The Indian minister later holding a press conference said he would describe the current situation of ties with China as work in progress and Friday's discussions were aimed at expediting that process The frictions and tensions that arise from China's deployment since April 2020 cannot be reconciled with a normal relationship between two neighbors uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi spoke about China's desire for a return to normalcy while also referring to the larger significance of our ties earlier this week wang also visited afghanistan and pakistan and ahead of the india trip drew a rebuke from the indian government for remarks in islamabad on the disputed kashmir region jay shankar said india hopes china would follow an independent policy in respect to new delhi and will not allow its policies to be influenced by other countries Wang Yi later in the day flew to Nepal where China is trying to deepen its influence. Hindu monk turned politician Yogi Adityanath on Friday took oath as chief minister of India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state for a second time. Yogi was sworn in by the state's governor Anandi Ben Patel in a jam-packed grand ceremony held at a cricket stadium in Lucknow in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other top leaders of India's ruling BJP the Bharatiya Janata Party. His jumbo team of 52 ministers also took the oath during the ceremony. In the recently held seventh phased polling the BJP led alliance secured 274 seats in the 403 seat assembly. becoming the first party in over 3 decades to form a government for a second consecutive time in Uttar Pradesh 49 year old yogi's performance has risen his political stock and reinforced perception among his supporters that he could one day lay a claim to the prime minister's seat in news from pakistan the speaker of pakistan's parliament had joined a motion of no confidence against prime minister imran khan on friday provoking opposition accusations he was buying time for the ex cricketer to muster support after a spate of defections from his party the motion will now be tabled on march 28 the national assembly session to deliberate on the no confidence motion against pakistan prime minister imran khan was adjourned on friday by speaker asad kaiser provoking opposition accusations he was buying time for the ex cricketer to muster support after a spate of defections from his party the motion will now be tabled on monday after which 7 days of debate should take place before an actual vote
Addressing a press conference outside Parliament House after the session was adjourned, opposition leader Shahbaz Sharif from the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz took aim at Speaker Asad Kaiser, calling him a stooge of Imran Khan. We decided that we would come to you and say that we would like to say that if the speaker has started a speaker, if the speaker has started a speaker, کوئی ایسا عمل شروع کیا جو کہ غیر آئینی ہوگا غیر قانونی ہوگا غیر پارلیمانی ہوگا تو پھر ہم ہر آئینی قانونی اور سیاسی ہم ہر بار استعمال کریں گے تاکہ ووٹ آف نو کانفیڈنس کی جو اس کی جو سینکٹی ہے اس کو ہر صورت میں ہم انٹیکٹ کریں اور ووٹ آف نو کانفیڈنس جو ہے وہ قانون کے ذریعے آگے چلے بلاول بھٹو زرداری لیڈر آف دی رائیول پاکستان پیپلز پارٹی ڈسکرائب دی اسپیکر ایز ایکٹنگ لائک اے پرسنل سرونٹ آف دی پرائم منسٹر اور ہم عمران کو نہیں بھاگنے دیں گے کب تک بھاگ سکتا ہے آپ کا بز دل وزیر اعظم انشاءاللہ تعالی انشاءاللہ تعالی مقابلہ ہوگا In recent weeks, more than 20 lawmakers deserted Khan, leaving him short of the minimum 172 that he needs for a simple majority in parliament. Political analysts expect Khan's supporters to use the weekend to persuade some of the turncoats to return to the fold. Moving on, Gary Catright, a prominent journalist and human rights defender during his intervention at the ongoing UNHRC session this week, called out Pakistan for denying freedom of expression and self-determination to residents of Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. He said Pakistan has no local standee on the occupied territories and has not been following its obligations to protect fundamental rights. He highlighted voices of the people of the occupied territories are muzzled with force for raising their just concerns, including for demanding basic amenities. Activists blamed that in the name of countering terrorism and to muzzle dissent, arbitrary dissensions, extrajudicial killings and persecution of common public and activists are committed in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. People of ours in Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan live in challenging conditions and do not have the freedom to exercise their fundamental rights. Their civil and political liberties are restricted and dominated by military and intelligence services. There are strict curbs on political pluralism, freedom of the press, freedom of expression and of association. Moving on, Altaf Bhatt, a political activist, has lamented people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir are still reeling from the effects of the 2005 deadly earthquake in the region, with no development and reconstruction of infrastructure since then. He said successive governments have only made big claims, but no groundwork has been done over the years. Altaf Bats, the former candidate of local assembly of Pakistan and Minister Kashmir, has claimed since the 2005 deadly earthquake hit the region, there has been no development and no implementation of reforms for the welfare of the affected people. He highlighted even 16 years after the calamity, several schools in the region are forced to hold classes in the open, while poor condition of roads continue to create daily travel problems for locals. A complete overhaul is required, but the government pays no heed to the dilapidated infrastructure. <laughs> ہر حکومت جو آتی ہے وہ دعویٰ کرتی ہے ہم تعمیر و ترقی کریں گے پانچ سال پورے ہو کر آخر میں وہ یہ بتاتے ہیں کہ جناب ہم تو کرنا چاہ رہے تھے فلا رکاوٹ آئی اور ہمارے پانچ سال پورے ہو لوکلز ان دی الیگلی اوکیپائیڈ ریجن ہیو لانگ بلیمڈ دی ہیو بین آپ دی ریسیونگ اینڈ آف دی ڈسکریمنیٹری پالیسیز آف اسلام آباد وائل کرپشن اینڈ ان ایڈیکوینسیز ان دی سسٹم ہیو ٹرنڈ دی ریجن Former Maldives President Abdullah Yamin, seen as closer to China, has returned to politics with the campaign against Indian influence in the country. He alleges New Delhi has developed a major military presence in the archipelago, claims the ruling party denies. Abdullah Yamin, a former Maldives president jailed on corruption charges, has returned to politics with the campaign against Indian influence in the country as New Delhi battles China for supremacy in its own backyard. In a rare interview to news agency Reuters, Yamin, who is reportedly backed by China, said 
he wants to cancel defense deals signed with India, with whom Maldives share decades of close and friendly ties. He alleges New Delhi has developed a major military presence in the archipelago off the coast of Sri Lanka. Claims the ruling party denies. But the growth of the campaign since a graft conviction against Yamin was overturned in November has drawn large crowds at rallies and galvanized his progressive party of Maldives, seen as being closer to Beijing. Local media has reported threats have been made to Indian teachers working on two different islands, a claim Yamin called total rubbish. In the out campaign, yeah. uh, that's because of uh, several unlawful concessions given to Indian military as well as to the Indian government to the extent that it only, uh, not only endangers our national security but also impedes our progress development. Maldives Defence Minister Maria Didi said India's military presence was limited to the operation and maintenance of three search and rescue and surveillance aircraft used by Maldives Defence Forces as well as a medical team at a military hospital. She also said some of the deals with India Yamin is seeking to cancel were signed during his own time in power. India supplies much of the country's food imports, but China has made increasing inroads since Yamin's five-year term, when he made Maldives a part of Beijing's Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative, a program the United States sees as a way to trap smaller countries into debt. With presidential polls due next year, Yamin said he was considering whether to contest. At Radio Nepal Lab Expo, the only B2B event in the field of laboratory, scientific, analytical, research and biotechnology sector, is currently underway in capital Kathmandu. Indian suppliers of laboratory equipment who are taking part in the event have found a feasible place for selling their products. Indian suppliers of laboratory equipment who are taking part in the three-day Nepal Lab Expo that commenced in capital Kathmandu on Thursday have found the Nepali market a feasible place. The Nepal Lab Expo is a B2B business-to-business -business event in the field of laboratory, scientific, analytical, research and biotechnological sectors in Nepal. This event has given the platform to a variety of international companies. Over 200 companies have set up their stalls for the exhibition, amongst which Indian companies dominate over others. Nepal में market Nepal में manufacture नहीं है, हाँ, अभी जो है यहाँ पे अच्छा मिल रहा है, जो भी आ रहे हैं देख रहे हैं काफी छुक हैं. The event is witnessing visitors from pharmaceutical, research and development, quality control, food processing, education, diagnostics and chemicals. Yeah, the trade relation between Nepal and India has been too long. It has been since ages and uh, since ages we have been supplying to Nepal and now since the emergence of COVID the number of hospitals are too increasing. So this creates a huge demand that need to be catered and as a, as a heavy neighbor and a good uh, trade relator we can su supply these goods to Nepal and this platform, the platform like this, give us opportunity to supply it to different personnel and different hospitals in Nepal. In 2019, the fourth show witnessed over 6,500 trade visitors along with 278 exhibitors from 18 countries in three days. The expo was inaugurated by Nepal's Health Minister Ridesh Tripathi and Indian Ambassador to Nepal Vinay Mohan Quatra. It will come to a close on March 26. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Border face-off impedes ties, India tells Chinese foreign minister. National Assembly session on no trust motion against Pakistan PM adjourned till March 28. And Maldives former president plots come back with India out campaign. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.